We all want to make sure when we buy a computer that it's the best for our needs. But do we know which option is better? So that's why in this video, I'm going to compare the latest M1 Mac Mini to the new 2021 M1 iMac. So if you're in the market for a new computer, which is the best for you to pick up? Let's go ahead and take a look. Now that we finally have two actual desktop machines from Apple with similar specs, but depending on what you want for your setup, they're totally different. Now I actually haven't done a video on my current setup, but that'll be coming down the road real soon. For those of you that have been following me for a while, I finally upgraded my 2015 27 inch iMac that was spec'd out to a spec'd out, or so I thought, 2020 M1 Mac Mini. If you don't know what I mean, go ahead and check out this video right here when you're done watching this one. I digress. My new Mac Mini does have 16 gigs of memory, two terabytes of storage. Now most people might think, wow, that's a lot of storage, I don't really need that. That's fine. I like to do that because I edit videos and the files can get rather large and I like to keep it in the machine. Now I also have a hub that I use along with my Mac Mini to add more ports, which is one of the things we need to talk about for both machines. And along with my Mac Mini, I do have an LG 27 inch ultra fine 5K display. Overkill for most, yes, but remember, I had a 27 inch iMac with a 5K display before. I couldn't downgrade, especially with editing video. And no, you don't need this display which costs $1,000. In most cases, there are some insane displays that are 1080, 2K, or 4K displays that are under 500 bucks. Now the iMac that I did pick up has the upgraded 16 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. One thing I did want to try is editing on this machine with external storage to see if saving that money up front would be possible with an upgrade on the Thunderbolt 4 ports on this machine. Beyond being able to pick out the color for this machine, you do get a 24 inch 4.5K monitor, which Apple works its magic to look absolutely awesome. Now I'm not a huge fan of the white bezels because I'd rather be immersed in the screen as opposed to the screen being blended around the walls behind it. But that's just me and of course, a topic for my review video, not here. Which I might want to remind you, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, turn on the notification bell, so you don't miss that video when it comes out. As far as comparing these two machines, obviously you have to first look at the biggest differences. The iMac is an all-in-one, the Mac Mini isn't, duh. Okay, so you got an M1 Mac Mini base with eight gigs of memory and 256 gigs of storage, that's gonna run you about 699 bucks. And for that price, you get internal gigabit ethernet port, two USB-C 4 slash Thunderbolt ports, HDMI 2.0, and two USB-A 2.0 ports. Oh, and don't forget the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. But what most people leave out when they're comparing these two is of course you're gonna need a monitor, that's obvious. But you might need a keyboard, a mouse, speakers, and a camera for video calls. So let's go ahead and break this down. Number one, for a good quality keyboard and mouse, I found Logitech offers a really good combo for about 25 bucks. Of course, you can go higher than that if you want to, but that's up to you. Next, you're gonna need a webcam. Logitech, not a sponsor, honest, offers a good 1080p webcam for about 45 bucks. Now keep in mind, if you do find a monitor that has a webcam, you won't need this. Now the same thing goes for speakers. The monitor I'm about to share does have speakers, but if you want your own external speakers, you could spend anywhere from 50 to $200. It's totally up to you. It can get pricey. I'll go ahead and link some budget ones and not so budget ones down below. So for the purposes of this video, let's say you need them and you're gonna spend a hundred bucks. Sound fair? Okay. Next, now the monitor you want, you don't have to spend $1,000 like I did for a 5K monitor. I would have gone with an LG 27 inch ultra fine UHD 4K monitor for 437 bucks. Okay, now that we got that done, let's go ahead and take a look at the M1 iMac. You can get a base model with eight gigs of RAM and the same 256 gigs of storage for $1,299. But let's look a little closer at that. You get two USB-C 4 slash Thunderbolt ports. Oh, 
you were waiting for more? Uh, I'm sorry, okay. And a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. That's it. Um, that's all you get. Oh, oh, and the graphics card on the M1 chip only has seven cores, not eight. And no, there's no ethernet port. So if your Wi-Fi stinks, you are gonna need to spend an extra 30 bucks to get it when you order it, which is on the external power supply. Yeah, that thing. The cord matches the color of the machine, so there's that. Now there's a couple more things that this iMac doesn't include that Apple didn't tell us. Come on! These are big, but more on that in a moment. Don't miss this, it might change your mind not even getting the base iMac. All right, so we've got them both built out. The Mac Mini. Hmm, 1300 bucks. iMac, 1300 bucks. Hmm, I didn't even try to do that when I was adding the accessories. Pretty good. Now, remember, look at what you still get with the Mac Mini for that same price. The Ethernet port, if you didn't upgrade it, an extra graphics core, which could come in handy, HDMI port, and those two USB-A ports. Now, if you wanted to get an iMac and compare it apples to apples, you're now upping the base cost of $14.99, which comes in at about 200 bucks more. So now you can spend more on accessories for your Mac Mini and not feel bad. <laughs> now, of course, let's not forget we need to point out the iMac will now get two extra USB-C ports, Thunderbolt 3, but still no USB-A ports. So if you've got that USB-A cable product, you're still gonna need an adapter to plug them in. Look, th this just keeps going. At this point, just buy a hub for the Mac Mini that I got for $89 call it a day. You get a ton of extra ports. Heck, we'll do the same thing for the iMac. I'll link a prettier one down in the description that doesn't match the Mac Mini that's for that specifically. I'll link the ones for the iMac down below that look a little better with the aesthetics. Now that you understand the price versus what is included, let's talk about performance. Unfortunately, this doesn't get any better. <laughs> I mentioned a couple minutes ago that there was a couple reasons why you might want to skip the base iMac altogether. Yeah, that compared to the next level one up has been found to only have one fan instead of two and only one heat pipe instead of two. Now you might say, what's the point? There are a myriad of reasons why you might not want to get this, especially if you're going to be using this machine for software that really asks a lot from the CPU and GPU. One of the biggest reasons I wanted to talk about is if the machine starts running hot, it could cause it to run slower, thus affecting the work that you're trying to get done. Now, it's not all bad if you're using this as a machine for the family and aren't doing things that call for that much usage, then you're probably gonna be fine. But if you aren't, this could cause a lot more headaches than it's worth. If you're still unsure and want to learn a little bit more, I did find a really good video by Max Tech that does an awesome job doing a comparison between the base iMac and the next level up. Go ahead and check that out right here after the video. But as far as the performance between the Mac Mini and the base iMac, I'm afraid you'll probably run into about the same issues. Now, while the Mac Mini does only have one fan set up just like the iMac, the iMac, of course, has a monitor right there, possibly causing more heat. Now, of course, the Mac Mini is set up differently. It allows it to run cooler and not get as loud compared to the base iMac. Again, in my opinion, the slightly higher spec iMac will be a much better matchup with the Mac Mini. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I only got 256 gigs of storage on my model iMac, and I wanted to see if the performance would be affected at all if I used an external SSD. I did run some speeds for the internal SSD on the iMac, it was 1800 write and 2800 read. The two terabyte external SSD I have, which was a pretty good one, does have speeds that are 700 write and about 750 read. 
Now it is a marked difference, but I didn't really notice any kind of slowdown or stuttering while editing. The external drive did a great job. It wasn't perfect, but it's a two terabyte SSD. It will be more than enough and only cost me 200 bucks to upgrade, while the two terabytes in the Mac mini was an extra $600. So personally for me, it's usable, but I definitely noticed the difference in editing and rendering as the process between the drive and the machine did slow it down a little bit. Could it get more annoying over time? Yeah, well, I was annoyed with it on my 27 inch iMac. I know it's tough to pay what it's being charged up front, but make sure you have enough storage for what it is you're trying to do. If you can, maybe save the internal drive some pain by storing pictures, music, and files on an external drive so you can do things like video editing or editing pictures. On a side note, the Mac Mini internal speeds were 2800 read and write. Now that probably has something to do with the fact that I maxed out the storage, so it might actually be running just a little bit faster. I'm certainly happy with the performance and what I need it for. So which do you buy? Uh, we're gonna kinda play the fence here. <laughs> If you're picking up a machine to do the basics, then yeah, the base iMac might be perfect for you. One cord to plug it in, it looks good, and it'll last a few years. If you want to do a little bit more but still don't want a messy area, then spend the $14.99 on the iMac and it'll probably be a great machine for a little bit longer than the base. Maybe you don't care about the look. So the Mac Mini is certainly powerful enough to run what you need. Maybe you already have a keyboard, a mouse, the speakers. Hell, maybe you want a larger monitor or already have one. But one question I haven't asked yet. Maybe you want to wait for the next gen 27 inch iMac, maybe larger. Go ahead and check out this video I did right here on the rumors. Hit that thumbs up button. Oh, give me a subscribe if you enjoyed this. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.